जय श्री माता जी गुड मॉर्निंग ब्रदर्स एंड सिस्टर्स प्लस बो डाउन टू श्री माता जी रेज अवर मदर कुंडलिनी एंड पुट बंधन श्री गणेश मंत्र Let's bring our attention on our Sahasara. And request Shri Mataji to come into our heart. Shri Mata Ji, kindly guide us and bring us into the complete balanced state. Let's bring our right hand on the floor. Shimata Ji, you are Sakshat Shri Mahakali. Please destroy all the negativity on our left channel.
let's balance our right side shimata ji you are sakshat shri mahasaraswati please remove all the negativity on our right channel Let's bring both our hands on the heart level. <coughs> Shri Mata Ji, you are Sakshat Shri Mahalakshmi. Remove all our imbalances, negativity of our central channel. Let's balance our Agya Chakra. I forgive everyone, and I forgive myself. Let's bring our right hand on our sahasara. Shri Mata Ji, you are the goddess of sahasara. You are Sakshat Shri Adi Shakti. Help us to feel your presence within us. Bring our hand back. Now let us listen to Shri Mata Ji's speech on this auspicious occasion of day three of Navratri. Today we have gathered here to do the puja of the Devi. The Devi has many forms. 
but it's the embodiment of the Shakti. Adi Shakti gives Shakti to all these embodiments. And so there are many goddesses we have at different times, they came on this earth and did all that was necessary for the ascent of people who were seekers. Especially the one we know of, Jagadamba Durga. She was trying to protect all the seekers of Truth and to destroy all evil forces. Because without the ascent of human beings, they do not know the Truth. And that's why whatever they try to do is a mental projection. And this mental projection, if it is not substantiated by Truth, by Dharma, it declines. In Sanskrit they call it Glani. <coughs> when this Glani takes place, <coughs> then incarnations are born to solve the problem. <coughs> In all incarnation of the Goddess, <coughs> there have been very much incarnated the satanic forces. They had incarnated and she had to fight with them and destroy them. But this destruction was not for the destruction's sake that the evil forces are to be destroyed, but evil forces always try to put down the seekers, put down the saints, try to har harm them, sometimes even destroy <coughs> All these destructive forces do not come at the same time, normally, at different times. It's easy to handle. But the aim <coughs> of the Incarnation is to save, to protect, the people who are seekers, because they are the most important people in the realm of spirituality. All others are nothing but dust, good for nothing, useless. If they are not seeking the Truth, in the eyes of God they are just useless uh, lives that have come and will be finished. They have no value and they have no dignity, they have no understanding of anything. <coughs> so, in the judgment of the Divine Love, we have two types of people. One who are seekers of Truth and the another who are not. They may be good people, they be nice people, they be doing a lot of good work, social work, this work, missionary work, every sort of work they might be doing. But if they are not seeking the Truth, then they do not come to that category where God has to incarnate. So try to understand the preciousness, the importance of seekers. And that's what you have been seeking. Very few persons, if you take the percentage of seeker, is very, very wee bit. But it's very important because, say, a one little part of gold 
is much more valuable than bonds of steel. In the same way, a seeker is much more valuable in the growth of spirituality. The whole universe was created, whole <coughs> atmosphere was built, all the evolution took place for what? That human beings should know the truth. But in the modern atmosphere, it's a very big curse, I think the greatest evil than all the Shumbhani Shumbhas and all that. The worst of all is materialism, because materialism makes you gross. In your seeking also when you are rising, subtly that materialism catches you. I've been noticing this. When people come to Sahaja Yoga, right, they are going deep into themselves, they are understanding what I'm saying, all the inner knowledge <coughs> they want to know, what is called as Atmagyan. Atmagyan means two things, the knowledge about the Spirit and knowledge about yourself. All this they find out and they know what it is. This state is the state for which people have been doing all kinds of things, going to the Himalayas, meditating in the cold without much clothes on them, living in the caves with some fruits. All kinds of tapasyas they would do because the seeking was so deep, so urgent and they could not get out of that force of seeking. But in the modern times, materialism retards that hankering, that dedication. It's maddening for people when they are seekers. I've seen before coming to Sahaja Yoga, people spend a lot of money, go to various places, go to Himalayas, go to Nepal, go to Japan, all over the places they are moving. But after coming to Sahaja, after they have become the spirits, for the growth of your new awareness, the progress is retarded. Also, one should understand that after so much of running about, you find something so precious, so you settle down and you feel very satisfied about it. That part is all right. But what later? Your growth should not stop. And that stops because, because of one of the main reasons is materialism. Because of materialism, you, your faith in yourself is also less. Now as you have seen that the gods prayed to the Goddess and she came and killed all the negative forces. The reason was the earnest desire of the gods compelled her to take in God. Such sincere desire also that they could not get sometimes food, even water, and they worked so hard to, for their ascent, which was disturbed by negative forces. So their call was. so from the heart, so desperate, 
and genuine and sincere that the goddess had to take birth on this earth to save them, to protect them, to look after them. <laughs> but as it is, we see, once you have reached a destination, you feel now better settled down. Now, what do we settle down with? If after getting Realization you are complete, you are in totality, you are absolutely one with Reality, there is nothing to be done. You become a saint, and a saint does not need any advertisement, does not need anything. His message spreads, people see Him and know He is a great saint. So many saints did not even leave their houses. A very common saying in India, your takya you should not leave, that the pillow on which you are resting you should not leave. That was the criteria of a guru. Those <coughs> who have to, see, should come to the Gurus, <coughs> climb up at least six, seven miles up, and then the Guru doesn't meet anyone. He may slap you, he may hit you, he may drop you from that high mountain. He'll take your test by so many ways. Ultimately, he may select one person to give realization. So this hankering, this desperate effort was all the time there. Now, so we come to Sajo in this modern time. Sometimes I feel that not only Sahaja Yoga is very easy, also it is extremely pampering. You know you have got Realization. You all know that you are better than others, that you have got rid of so many problems and that now you have become master of your own. Then the responsibility that you have towards yourself and to your fellow men reduces because you feel very satisfied with yourself. The other day some Sajogini rang me up, I mean they rang, ring me up for everything. She said that, uh, she said that I went to the doctor and he put radiation and they found I was pregnant, so what should I do about the baby? For such a small thing, they will ask, what should be the name of our son? What is this? What is that? I mean, I have to do much more work than any priest has to do. Little, little things they are worried about. All right. That part is all right. That I have to tell you what is to be done at such a point or what should be done. If they miss the train, they'll telephone to me, Mother, we have missed the train, now what to do? So I have to tell them, all right, give them a bandha. That also I have to tell them. Or, suppose their father is sick, he has a heart trouble, then they'll telephone to me, Mother, my father is sick, he has a heart trouble, he's not a surgery, what can you do about it? So Mother has to put attention, to his father who is not a surgeon. Small, small things they write to me, such small things that you can't imagine how they do not understand what I am here for. Still, I have never said that this is a stupid thing to ask me, you should not waste my time, never. But it's to be seen now that 
If you do not value yourself as realized souls, you cannot value my time also or what is myself. This incarnation can be wasted completely because of this materialistic attitude. In this modern times, I don't know what's gone wrong with human beings, because the most important thing in your life is to ascend and to go. Take a big vision of the whole thing. Why this universe was created? Why you were created as human beings? What was the need to do all these things? For what is it done? If you have a very big vision of the whole thing, then try to locate your position. Where am I? And then how the Divine has selected me, and now I've become a surgeon. So now what is my responsibility that one has to see? But on the contrary, I have seen people who are saying, I have a transfer. So they'll telephone and ask, Mother, should we take our chair or not? That shows they have no value about themselves and no value about me, both ways. Because they are asking such small things, such silly things, that is impossible to understand how could Sahaja Yogis ask such questions. In the perspective we can see the Goddess. She comes on this earth in different forms at different times to save the seekers of Truth, and to work out the ascent of the seekers of Truth. Can you imagine? A very big difference in the incarnation of the Goddess before Kali Yuga, while now. It's a very different thing that you have come on this earth to become the Sahaja Yogis. You have to have a body, a mind, feeling, everything which is just charged with spirituality, charged with your spirituality, should be normally. Because how many years in the past you have been seeking God? Then that you came here. What a coincidence! But then what is it? When you have such a great advantage that you have come to Sahaja Yoga because of your seeking, and now you have found the satisfaction out of it, what is the responsibility that you have? that the Incarnation itself has come on this earth, not only to protect you, to nourish you and to kill the demons, no! She has come on this earth to tell you about everything that is subtler inside and to tell you what should be your relationship, should be outside as well as inside. You are never connected with Truth. You are never connected with this all-pervading power. You were never connected with God Almighty. So one has to understand that what a great thing has happened, that out of Me only this Kundalini has come out and she has touched these higher centers. How? This was not done before. No. 
They were just protected. They were just looked after. Nowhere it is written that Goddess has given realization to people. Nowhere. She is responsible, she can give. One of her names is that. I'm not one, but at least ten names are that she gives you your nirvana, that she gives you your freedom, that she introduces you to liberty. All these things are written, but what's happening now is that people have not yet been able to grasp the value of their life in the modern time. See the way people ask questions. See the way people, the inquiry is on. The way people are worried, now my child is big, what should I do? What should you do? Child is big, put him to school, do what you like. Mother, will you please tell where to put the child? Then you put the child. Have you seen the school, mother? No, I haven't. Then you go and inspect the school. Imagine Kali Mata doing that. She would have given two nice tight slaps, I tell you. Anybody who would have said that, what do you make out of? But to that detailed extent, a motherhood has to work. You wouldn't do that for your own child, I know. But when it comes to children, what are they doing? Still materialistic. Today especially it's a very great day of the Shaira Bhikkhura. This is the day when, as you know, Ravana was burnt. Effigies of Ravana were burnt all over the place. When Sri Rama came, this was done. His victory. But it is victory, it was not that he made Sajogis or he gave realization, no. His victory was that he killed Ravana. That was done that time for today's preparation. For today's happenings. It was done long time back. That These days will come when people will have proper value system of victory of Sri Rama. But it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. Because this incarnation of Mataji Nirmala Devi is very different, a very elusive Mahamaya. So you are left to yourself, do what you like. Whatever you like, you can do it. So they will ask me, Mother, we, ha we have a problem. I said, what? We don't know which kind of chairs we should buy. For every small thing <laughs> they will refer to Mother, but for important thing never. Sort of a funny use of the whole thing has started, which is so great, so important, is used for something absolutely nonsensical. So see the difference between the incarnations. One incarnation comes on this earth to save the people, to bring them out of the mire of Maya. But another incarnation which has come is not only just to talk about it, but to give you your Realization and then to look after your small, small things.
महामंत्रास Thank you, Shimataji, for this beautiful collective morning meditation. Thank you, Shimataji, for keeping us in your protection always. Jai Shimataji. Let's bow down to Shimataji, raise our Mother Kundalini, and put Bandha.
let us join for navratri havan today at 4 pm same channel happy navratri jai shri mata ji